Uh, I would like to introduce Jethro Grassi. He is a longtime Monero contributor, uh, and he is here to speak about the elephant in the pool, which is uh, an issue about. I'll let you. I'll let Jethro speak. Thank you. Okay, so. Um, I'm sure everybody's heard of the elephant in the room. I just caveat that to start with. Um, so this is a, just a play on that, that phrase. So when we're all here, I'm presuming everybody in this room has come to cryptocurrencies for some kind of really key fundamental points. And, you know, those are on the screen. Decentralization, censorship resistance, trustless, open, and private. These are fundamental to why we're all here, why we're all participating in this wonderful um, shape of, uh, of the world at the moment. And there's this one thing that really, really gripes me. And it's such a fundamental part to the whole ecosystem, which is, of course, mining. Now, mining, we all need mining. It's, it's fundamental to how cryptocurrencies work. However, what's happened ever since that, you know, going back to the early days of Bitcoin, is we've had pool mining. And pool mining has a number of issues with it. So before we go into exactly how pool mining works, let's just, uh, let's just remind ourselves for those that, that, that aren't so into the space of mining and how it works, let's just go over a couple of the fundamentals. So a transaction, Alice wants to send Bob some money. Well, as we all know, it doesn't directly go from one computer, from Alice's computer to Bob. What actually happens is it gets broadcast to the network and it gets bounced around nodes in the network, and what they do is they add it to the transaction pool. So in this picture here, we have uh, Alice to Bob's transaction, the yellow, orange uh, transaction, sitting in the trans transaction pool that every node can see. Okay, so one of those nodes happens to be a miner. And what does he do? He grabs as many transactions from the pool that he can to, 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 to basically make what's called a block template. Now in this example, he's grabbed all of them. Um, the, obviously the pool can have loads and loads of transactions in it. And back to um, uh, Arctic Mines talk, Obviously, a miner chooses uh, transactions to, to not incur a block penalty. So they won't always choose every transaction. As I said, they, they create these uh, block templates from those transactions they've picked. And as you see in the green um, transaction at the bottom, that's what's called the Coinbase transaction. That's the transaction which when, this, when and if this block gets mined, that miner will get paid out the, the fees from the other transactions and the Coinbase reward. So that block template gets reduced into what's called a block hashing blob. And that is the thing that a miner mines on. Uh, to, to Howard's point, the inefficient loop. And they keep doing this inefficient loop until they find a winning nonce, and then they put that nonce into their block template, and they broadcast that to the rest of the network. And hopefully, they got it in first and uh, before anybody else managed to, to, to mine a block. And if they did, then they're going to get that Coinbase reward. And that's solo mining for you. So, pool mining. 
In a similar fashion, we have a pool of transactions in the tra transaction pool. Again, we have the yellow Alice Bob transaction. Now, the pool server, the red computer in this example, does the same thing as a solo miner in that they grab a load of transactions. And again, like I said here, this is an example where they're grabbing all of them. But there could be more. And here's one of our problems with pool mining, which I'll come on to. Um, so they grab those transactions. They make a block template. They add their own Coinbase transaction into the block template. They reduce the block template to a block hashing blob. And in this scenario, the pool server doesn't do the work on the block hashing blob. They distribute that to their pool miners. The pool miners receive the block hashing blob. They actually receive their own block hashing blobs, but that's a detail that's not relevant here. Um, and they send back to the pool server um, the nonce and the result hash that they they manage to achieve. So the, the important point here is the miners haven't seen the block template at all. They've got no idea what transactions are in that block template. The pool, when it gets back, one of the many responses from the, the pool miners um, it has to validate, obviously, that... Uh, and don't forget, the, the, the results from the pool miners are, are, are to a lower difficulty than the, than the global difficulty. But, of course, one of them, hopefully, uh, hashes that, um, that hashing blob, and that um, if, if they hash that uh, hashing blob and, that ha and the result hash happens to meet the global difficulty, then the pool server can then add the nonce to the block template and distribute that to the rest of the network, and the pool gets the payout. And of course, then the pool is responsible to pay out all the individual miners for their contributions. This thing is really annoying. Ah, here we go. So what are, our, what are the key problems with this? Well, obviously, we have to trust the pool. We have to trust them, first and foremost, from the miners' perspective, that they're paying out fairly. And honestly, this is the, what you mostly see on the likes of Reddit, like people moaning about various pools not, pay, not paying them their fair share. There was, there's been earlier pools that have skimmed shares so that the pool themselves gets more of the profit. But for the rest of us, for, the, for the, the network as a whole, we have to trust that they're actually a good faith actor. And why do we have to do that? Well, we have to trust that they're a good faith actor, primarily because they're centralized, obviously. They're the ones that are in control of creating that block template. They're the one that's selecting those transactions. We have to trust that they're actually not uh, performing attacks like a 51% attack, because let's be honest, the, the pool distribution is not that high. It's, there's, there's been many a time where you know, one or two colluding pools could control 51% of the hash rate. In fact, quite recently before our last, not this last fork, but the fork before, um, there was a very real risk that, um, that, that a pool could have had a 51% of the uh, hash rate. Um, another subtle thing here is uh, that we have to trust that they're mining the correct chain. Um, don't forget, the, the miners that are participating in a pool, they've got no idea. As long as, the, as long as they're hashing the right algorithm, well, there could be many Monero forks that use the, exactly the same hashing algorithm. Um, they, have to, they, they and we have to trust that the pool is actually giving block hashing blobs that are for the Monero chain. 
Now, I don't, I don't want, I don't want um, miners to be uh, mining some, you know, Monero fork. Uh, the miner themselves may be very uh, invested in Monero and, and want to ensure that they're, they're helping the Monero network. And critically is the, the transaction censorship. Um, we have n no miner or us, no, nobody has any observation as to if there's any transaction censoring going on. In fact, there, there's been a couple of things recently that uh, came up. I forget which uh, currency it was. I think it was Zcash or Zcoin. One of them where there was a pool that actually was uh, discovered to have censored some transactions. So it's a, it's a, it's a really fundamental issue. But why, so, so why are we using them? Why are we using these pools? Well, from a miner's perspective, it's really down to payout variance. Um, at the end of the day, whether you solo mine or mine in a pool, ultimately you will get the same payout, it's just how frequently you're gonna get paid. Now, so if you want a regular income, Pool mining is great. Um, there's also ease of use. Uh, so for people that don't want to set up a node, they don't want to go through the, the problems of that, like literally installing a miner on your computer, pointing it at a pool is incredibly simple. You don't need to know anything. You literally you follow a three-sentence guide that's on every pool website, and you can be mining in a matter of seconds. Uh, the other thing is maturity, obviously. There's really, pool mining has been around right from the start of Bitcoin. And the particular type of pool mining that we've got at the moment uh, is, is, is tried and trusted. I mean, it, it's very, very mature. But the critical thing is there's a, a real lack of alternatives, um, which we'll come into now. So my personal favorite is Peter Paul. Um, this, is, this was a, an, a, one of the early Bitcoin pool implementations, and it is extremely decentralized. There is no, there is no central authority here at all. Um, the way that it works is essentially every miner is running um, a, a node, a Peter, a Peter Paul node, they're also running their Bitcoin node, and they are creating their own block templates, and they are, uh, and they are basically mining to what's called, what, what Peter P calls a share chain. Um, what happens here is they're essentially all, everybody's essentially solo mining, but to a lower difficulty, and they're distributing um, to the other participants in the Peter pool. Um, one of the great things about this is obviously the, the Coinbase transaction that they're constructing pays out other participants in the pool as well. So there are a couple of drawbacks though with, with Peter Paul. Um, the, the most obvious one, of course, is your, you've got an extra P2P overhead. Not only are you running your Bitcoin uh, P2P node, you're also running the Peter Paul node. Um, and also, there's like high traffic on a Peter Paul node because you're you're essentially you're essentially mining to a lower difficulty to basically create a block every 30 seconds as opposed to every two minutes. So you're going to get a lot more traffic over that network. There's also the consensus overhead, um, which which because of the, the faster block time is is problematic. Uh, as I've mentioned, you've also got the the full node overhead as well. Um, there's also the problem of um, poor difficulty distribution. Um, so with, um, with, tr with our common pools in play today, you can mine with 50 hashes a second or 50 mega hashes a second, and you're still going to both get fair, sh fair payouts on your contribution. Unfortunately, Peter Paul is a, is a little, bit little bit more difficult than that, and actually you really want all of your participants to be roughly the same, have a, have a, have a nearer, a nearer um, hash rate capability each. 
And then the, the last Im important point is really there's only a single implementation. I spent a lot of time lo uh, looking to see if anybody else had been, been doing one. I spent probably about six months of my own time trying to, to build one for Monero. Um, and that, that would have been hopefully what I was presenting here today. But, um, you know, things change. Uh, lots of people told me, no, you're going to run into the consensus problem. And I was like, no, no, I've got that sorted. I, I'm, sure I've got, I'm sure I've got that worked out in my head. It's, it's, it's not a problem. And sure enough, I should have listened to Smooth and Howard and Gingeropolis. But uh, yeah, instead I wasted six months of my life. That's fine. <laughs> um, we've also got Better Hash by uh, Matt Carollo, uh, a Bitcoin developer. Um, now, he came at this from a slightly different uh, angle. I mean, this, this, like the same problem. He's, he's another like-minded person like me. Like, it's ridiculous. It's honestly insane that we, we've got pool mining in our ecosystem of cryptocurrencies and the way it works now. It's absolutely insane. Um, so he again, like, uh, and, and more so of a problem for Bitcoin, obviously. Um, so, so he came up with a protocol to try and tackle this for Bitcoin. Um, and the way he did this was with essentially separating the two, two parts of what pool mining does, which is separating the work and the payouts. Um, he does this by essentially allowing what he calls a controller, I call a proxy. I mean, it, it's very similar to, a, to, to our current node proxy servers. Um, basically constructs the block templates. Great. So we, we get away from the transaction censorship issue. However, he also replaces Stratum. Some people like hate Stratum. It's undocumented. It's thrown together. But honestly, in my view, it's such a simple protocol. People slightly change it to their own needs. So what? It's not hugely documented. I mean, it's such a... There's, so, there's nothing in there. It doesn't, it doesn't really need replacing. Um, but, it's, but one of the other great things about the way that he's, he's devised it is it's actually a very flexible, um, a flexible protocol. It allows you to work in a number of different ways. It allows you to stitch together your ecosystem in, in a number of different ways, which I won't go into, but they're, they're mostly, mostly everything to do with BetterHash is, is definitely targeted at the Bitcoin ecosystem, um, that being ASIC miners. Um, so it's got a couple of um, problems, and, and the, the first one here, which I actually think, I don't know if anybody's followed much of the press on this, but he got, he got pretty slated by a couple of other Bitcoin devs, which I thought was pretty unfair, because although BetterHash doesn't solve all of the problem, like in, in the same way that Peter Paul does from a decentralization perspective, it does solve one of the problems, and, and, and which is probably, the, well, I consider the most important problem, which is the censorship piece. Um, so it does still, Betash does still have a centralized payout logic. So the miners still have to trust the, the pool that it's actually giving them their fair share. Um, and that's because the, the, the Coinbase pays to the pool directly carries quite a lot of complexity by throwing away stratum and the way that pools currently work, it does introduce a huge amount of complexity. So whenever you're in, in introducing extra complexity, it's not just pools that you're talking about changing. It's also the miners, the miner software. It's talking about the actual um, Bitcoin uh, um, nodes as well. So there's a significant amount of changes that are required to actually implement uh, on top of the better hash protocol. Uh, less, less important, the fact that it's, it's rather untested at the moment. Obviously, we don't all want to jump off, jump onto something that's completely untested, but I, but I wanted to add it in there um, because I think any kind of changes that, that have and particularly for a, a currency like Bitcoin that's got so much money involved, like we wouldn't all want to jump onto something that's completely untested tomorrow. Um, and like I've said as well I, multiple times, 
it's uh, very much geared towards an ASIC uh, scenario because, of course, we really have to remember with ASICs is ASICs don't run full nodes. ASICs aren't clever enough to be able to select which transactions are going to go into a block template. An ASIC is just given something to hash, it hashes it, it sends a result back. That's all an ASIC does. So where I kind of netted out with my months of uh, pain on Peter Paul consensus, uh, which I think uh, we should do, I'm certainly going to implement it into um, a pool which, which I've authored um, and into a minor which I'm spending some time on now, um, is a stratum extension. Just take stratum as it currently works now. Like, it doesn't require a great deal of, of, of change to, to, to do what I'm going to propose here. So all that the pool need do is actually send a Coinbase transaction in Stratum. At the moment, it's sending a, uh, a block hashing blob. Now it can just send a Coinbase transaction. What then happens is your miner takes that Coinbase transaction and it creates its own block template in exactly the same way a solo miner does. But where a solo miner obviously adds their own Coinbase transaction, in this situation, they're going to take the pool supplied Coinbase transaction. Oh, one thing I glossed over. The, the, um, the Coinbase transaction that gets sent back, ideally it should be a multi-output um, uh, Coinbase transaction. Um, so at the moment, uh, Monero only has um, one payout on the Coinbase. Um, I did, through my Peter Paul work, I've, I've got a patch for Monero which um, allows it to, to pay out multiple, multiple um, Coinbases. Um, and this is quite important from an auditing, pers auditing perspective. Um, so the, the, so the, the pool sends a miner a Coinbase transaction, and the miner creates his block template, creates his own block hashing blob, mines it to the difficulty that the pool's expecting, or whatever the miner decides that he wants to, to, to hash it to. And critically, the miner can also submit the block here. The miner doesn't have to send the block that he's created back to the pool for the pool to submit, because that's another problem. If you're sending a block back to the pool, you've got to trust that the pool's going to submit it. Um, so essentially, you're putting as much power as you possibly can in control of the miner. And luckily, we can do this, because we don't have ASICs. Every one of our miners is running from a Windows or a Mac or a Linux machine, whether they're running you know, 20 GPUs or they're going to be doing loads of uh, CPU mining. We, we're doing it on computers. So we can run full nodes, and we, can, we have a lot more control. And critically, when you think about it, the changes required for this are negligible. They're actually really small. So, of course, it still has, um, excuse me, it still has um, the same problem that, um, that Matt's better hash has, which is we're still trusting the pool to do that share distribution. Um, it helps having the multi-output Coinbase transaction, but ultimately, if the only thing we're worried about is a pool doing, uh, uh, being in control of that share distribution, obviously miners can work out whether, whether pools are, are behaving there or not. Everybody knows what they're mining. They see what the network's mining. They see what the pool's mining. They can calculate themselves. And this has happened in the past, actually. Um, in, in earlier days with pools where, where miners have worked out, hey, well, I've got three mega hashes and I'm not getting the right payouts. You can work it out. So it's, it's not a huge problem. Um, the, the biggest issue is obviously miners now need node access. Now, I don't know how many people know, um, know miners that, that are out there, but I can tell you just from my own first-hand experience on, on, our, on our channels like Reddit and Stack Exchange, most of them don't, most miners are only in this game for the money. And so, like, them needing to run a full node, whilst I might say, well, that's absolutely fine, of course it is. The reality of it is some miners are going to 
moan about that, and it's a problem. But I think this is the best way forward, and this is certainly what I'm, what I'm going to be implementing over the next couple of weeks. Um, and hopefully some other, some other pools will, will follow fashion, because I think it's, whilst it's not perfect, I think it solves a couple of really critical issues. So, questions? Have you seen how Grin includes a stratum server with every full node? Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, what do you think of that? Uh, yeah, there's, there's, there's lots of interesting uh, ways. There's, there's lots of, I, I mean, I'd love it if everybody was just solo mining, personally. But, um, it's like your soul, you're your own pool, so you're solo yeah, mining, exactly. but you're not. So, you know, some of the medium-sized miners could, you know, I think, because setting up stratum, your own stratum server is such a pain in the ass, I've heard a lot of people that that stopped them from doing that. What do you think of possibly putting, like, you know, stratum in a Monero, in Monero full nodes? Well, so, so yeah, that's, that's, certainly, that's certainly one thing. There's also a... Um, there's also a, com uh, a competing fork which, uh, which has just added exactly what you're, you're describing, uh, a, stratum, uh, a stratum mining server, they call it a pool server, into their actual node as well. I mean, I have doubts that that's going to solve enough of the problems. Like, we have to look at all of the reasons that people are using pool, mine pool mines now, and if we can do the minimal changes to the current ecosystem, but get rid of some of the really big problems, I think that's, for me, that, that, that seems to be the most sensible um, approach. Like, I think that's, that's one way that we're gonna get a lot of miners updating the way that they're mining. If they've literally, if the only change they've gotta do is run a full node, then I think that's great. I have a question over here. I'm curious, uh, I, I am assuming that you're aware of the Bitcoin um, like API function, the get block template yeah. that was introduced, I mean, that was introduced a long time ago and it allows miners to populate blocks with transactions, right? And, and yeah. as far as I know, no one uses it because miners are totally apathetic and they don't want to run a full node in general. So I'm curious like, what do you expect Monero miners to behave significantly differently than, than the lack of uptake that Bitcoin uh, had with this kind of similar addition? Well, so, well, so Monero has got exactly the same function, get block templates. Uh, that's, that's how solo mining works. Um, and that's, that's the function that all the pools use. Um, they use the exact same function, Bitcoin and Monero, uh, calling get block template to, to basically get a template to mine on. Um, the, the problem is, is that you can override that template. You can create your own block template. You can select your own transactions to go into a block template. Um, that, I mean, that's the, one of the problems with, with pools. Um, I kind of lost track on where I was going with that. Um, but, but really, the, the, yes, I mean, you, you point out something, which is essentially a miner has to run a full node. In, in my scenario of, of an extended stratum protocol whereby the pool doesn't create the block template. That's, that's really the only problem that we're trying to solve here, is the pool creating the block template. So are you in favor of, like, if there was an extreme option? Thank you. If there was some theoretical extreme way to force solo mining onto the network at, like, the consensus level, like if you had to expose your private key to sign a block or something, I mean, if there was some way to force people to, to not pull mine, is that something you would be interested in, in pursuing? Um. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like you. <laughs> um, I, do, I, I don't like any kind of extreme actions. I, I'll, I'll say that. I like, and, and I do think the mining ecosystem is important. Like, it's, it's a big part of cryptocurrencies. It is, it is one part of the triangle, and I think it's, it is really important that there is a market for them, and, and they need pool mining, okay? 
yeah, I'd love it if I'd love it if every participant of Venero was mining. I'd love it if every wallet mined, and that actually every user was essentially a miner. In the ideal, yeah, that'd be fantastic. The reality is, we're not in that place. Uh, you know, there is this segment of mining in our ecosystem, and we do need to we do need to look after them. But but let but let's take. Let's look after them and welcome them into the ecosystem, but let's do it responsibly, is what I'm saying. We have one more. Uh, just a quick question. So once you're done implementing the pool, will that be a public pool that everyone can mine to? And then a follow-up to that with the multi-output Coinbase payout. It's my understanding that Monero is limited to 16 outputs per TX. Will that have to change for this, or will you do multiple Coinbase TXs? I'm just not sure how that no, works in practicality. No, it's a, it's a really interesting point, that, actually, because I, my brain went through exactly the same thing, actually, uh, early on. I was like, yeah, well, what the problem is is that the pool's going to need to pay out. I came to this question when I was working on my Peter pool, and I forget who it was on IRC, but they were like, when you think about it, it's actually really simple. All you do is you wait until miners hit a certain threshold before you pay them out. So we've only so the the Coinbase transaction patch that I've got that I've been using for testing Peter Paul, um, I, as you say, only outputs to 16 outputs. But the way that the that the pool works is obviously it waits until it's got you know x amount of, you know 16 miners that reach a certain threshold and then it pays those out. So you don't you would never get your payout until you reach a threshold so that you're in that 16. But yeah. Everybody, please give Jethro another hand.